In this video, we are going to learn about ear examination and how to complete the examination quickly. Throughout the video, I will also be sharing some important pointers for the examination. So let's begin. There are four parts that I have uh, divided the ear examination into. First is the inspection, which will be in two different sections. One is a general inspection from far away, comparing both the ears, and one will be a close ear inspection to the affected ear. Palpation, pinna, mastoid, pre, post auricular lymph nodes. Then comes the otoscopy, where you'll be doing an external auditory canal, and then you will insert again a little bit more to see your tympanic membrane. And then the hearing test. Hearing test you might not be able to do, but there will be a tuning fork kept most of the times. So you will just tell that I will complete my examination by doing a complete ENT examination and a Rene's and Weber's test. So that's how you will conclude your ear examination. You might not get the time to do a hearing test. Okay, so that's how I've divided the four parts into. Let's go into each one of them into details. Okay, so when we are talking about a general inspection on the ear, it's very important to understand that whether there is any tenderness. First, you do a general inspection, look at the shape, size and asymmetry of both of the ears, the left and the right, both of them. And then you look for any discoloration or if there is any deformities present. So there can be deformities, there can be a normal ear. Okay, then you go into the affected ear for a close inspection, look for any scars, any hematoma, look for any redness and obvious swellings, okay? And if there is any obvious lymph node enlargement. Now, if there is any tenderness, when you are starting your palpation to your pinna, look for, first you should look for any, if there's any swelling, nodules present in and around the pinna, and if there is any tenderness. Now, so we are talking about the palpation. So when we're talking about this palpation, you do start with your pinna, First, you check the swellings, you check for the nodules and you look for any tenderness. Now, if there is any tenderness, it can possibly be two things. I know we generally tend to think it can be only one thing, which is like otitis externa. But remember, it can be mastoiditis as well. So tenderness is anyways a contraindication because it is indicates a possible otitis externa. We cannot be 100% sure that it is otitis externa until unless we see it. Uh, apart from that, look for pre-auricular, so palpate on the pre-auricular region, in the auricular region and the post-auricular region to look for any tenderness if the patient is having. Okay, now how do you start in the station? Before you even start in the station, we tell the patient that I need to check your hearing by having a look inside your ears. I will be using an otoscope, which is basically a simple torch light with a magnifying glass. And it's a simple procedure that will not hurt, but may be a little uncomfortable. I will try to be as gentle as possible. So that's how you start your station, uh, not your station. That's how you start your examination by telling the patient, what are you going to do? What are you going to use? And it might be a little uncomfortable, but you will try to be as gentle as possible. Now, before you start your otoscopy, you need to hold the otoscope. I know all of you guys already know, but we'll just go quickly. It will, you just hold it like a pen between your index and your thumb, resting, resting the handle of the otoscope near your hand, in between your hand. And then you start, you're checking the patients. Always remember, start with the ear, which is actually normal, and then come back to the abnormal ear. Sometimes when we are doing a history and during the stress of the environment in the examination, we tend to forget which ear was it. Do not worry. You can always cross check and definitely do that before you even proceed for doing an otoscopy so that you are just being very sure which is the affected ear. Right. And then you should make sure that you choose the correct speculum which will be kept there. So once you fix the speculum to the otoscope, make sure that you're choosing the right size. If you choose a very big size, you might not be able to insert in the mannequin because ear of the mannequin is very small and it's basically made of a probably kind of a rubber material, right? So it is anyways having those resistance so it will not be easy to insert. Okay, uh, so when you start doing the otoscopy and you insert the otoscope, the first thing that you need to start inspecting is the uh, external auditory canal. What are you looking basically in the external auditory canal? So don't insert completely on the first go. Go slowly, look at the auditory canal, 
reflect on the auditory canal and tell what you can see. So can you see any infection? Is there any wax buildup in the external auditory canal? Do you see a foreign body or do you see any discharge? So comment on those things. Look for any redness. If there is growth or debris or granulation, I'll tell what those this mean. And don't forget the patient to ask for pain as you stretch the pinna and insert the otoscope. So whenever there is a white growth, if you can see inside, it might be a cholesteatoma. If you see any debris inside the ear in the external auditory canal, it can be otitis externa. Granulation and sometimes the visi uh, visible of the visibility of the blood vessels can show or can point us towards a healing infection, right? So these are the few things we need to comment upon because if this is the finding or if this is the station that we are in, and if we don't do that, we will miss the finding. And for that, we will be marked negatively, adversely in the examination section. Okay, so we will be looking at that. The next thing that you are be looking at is the color. Okay, so you insert again a little bit more and now we will be visualizing the tympanic membrane. So when we first start with the tympanic membrane, first start commenting on the color. Okay, so is the color pinkish gray or pinkish gray or grayish pink in color or is it normal in color, pearly white in color? Okay, if it is red, of course, it will be infection. If it is scarred, then it can be tympanosclerosis. So the color and the membrane itself is very important of the tympanic membrane. Okay, then you look at the structure, look for any perforation if it is present, look for any grommet. Okay, look for any grommet insertion that is there in the ear. Talk about the bulging of the tympanic membrane. If there is any bulging, if there is no bulging, if there is a bulging, it tells us about infection. Tell if it is retracted or not. If it is retracted, then there is a problem with the eustachian tube dysfunction. Now, comment on the fluid. Can you see any fluid inside the tympanic membrane or can you not? And if then possible, I personally do not comment on anything which is behind the tympanic membrane. For example, because it is very difficult to see it on a mannequin and whatever I don't see, I don't comment because it's like you have just, you know, mugged up everything which is there on the notes and you are just throwing it in the examination. But are you actually able to see? You don't know. And maybe if you see something, if you say that you are able to see, but the examiner knows that there is nothing over there in the ear, then you will be marked less because that, that means you are basically scripted. So only talk or comment about things which you can see. If you cannot see things, I would say not to comment. Of course, that's on your discretion whether you want to or not. My perspective, you should not because you're not able to see it really. But what do we generally comment behind the tympanic membrane? What are the visible features? We will be able to see pars tensa, pars flaccida, handle of the lateral process of the malleolus and the cone of light. Cone of light, you can definitely comment because that's very easy to see because it is on the inferior quadrant. So that is not very difficult. But apart from handle of the malleolus, pars flaccida and pars tensa is something which I have never been able to see in a mannequin. Right. Okay. So now the tympanic membrane, as I said, the color, if it's pearly gray, it will be normal. If it is blue, that means there's a fluid in the middle ear. If it is white, it might be tympanosclerosis. And then the hearing test. So how would we end the station? We would like to uh, end the station by saying to the examiner that would like to complete the examination by doing a Weber and Rinus test and a complete ENT examination, which will include the nose and the throat and to palpate for any cervical lymphadenopathy. That's how I generally do end the station for an ENT. And if you forget, that's fine. That's not a big deal. But in case if you do not forget and if you can recall this thing, it is very important. You tell the examiner that I would like to complete my examination by doing a Rini's and a Weber's test. Or you can pick up the um, tuning fork and say this thing. And then you can say I'll do a complete ENT examination, which will include the nose and the throat and to palpate for any cervical lymphadenopathy. And that's how you will be doing a complete ENT um, examination. Apart from, apart from this, so as I have said, so if I have to go in one go, I will tell. Um, I will start by saying the patient, I'll just go completely in one go. Okay. So I need to check your hearing by having a look inside your ears. I'll be using an otoscope, which is a simply a torch light and with a magnifying glass. And it will be a simple procedure that will not hurt you, but might feel a bit uncomfortable. I'll try to be as gentle as possible. 
Can you please remind me which one is your ear that is causing you trouble? The right one. So I will examine the healthy ear first, but for the purpose of the examination, I will only do the right one or the affected ear. Okay. If you do not remember, always, as I said, kindly ask the patient before you start. Inspection. There are no scars, sinuses, discharge, redness, swellings, or previous marks of surgery. There is no swelling, no obvious hematoma. I cannot see any deformity and there is no discharge present. Same for the post auricular and the auricular. So there is no deformity. There is no obvious hematoma, no mastoid bruises, and there is no discoloration. Okay. Now on palpation, look for the temperature comparing with between the ears, uh, between the uh, forehead and the ears of the pre-auricular, auricular and the post-auricular. So there is no obvious rise in temperature. Look for the tenderness, palpate with the thumb on first on the pre-auricular side, then on the auricular side and then on the post-auricular side. So we do it on three areas, so three different spots. Always palpation, keep looking at the patient's face, not the mannequin, but the actual patient sitting inside the cubicle because there might be some pain he will elicit without telling you just by his facial expression. And we would not want to miss those important cues. Okay, and then I will use the otoscope. We'll go on the otoscope, comment on the uh, external auditory canal, and then we'll comment on the um, tympanic membrane itself. And then I will I'll conclude my examination by performing a Runes and a Weber's test and a nose and a throat examination also by palpating the cervical lymphadenopathy and that's how it, it it will be that's how what i will do and it will be very simple it will be very swift you need to just keep practicing it all right i have few slides here um just to demonstrate few things so this is basically where you would be able to see probably the pars tensa and the pars flaccida some lateral process of the malleolus and the cone of light this is a actually an ear of a human being so it's easy to pull the ear uh, remember in in one of the examinations uh, and also on during the practice when you sometimes when you try to pull the ear the ear might come off so try to be as gentle as possible in the examination don't be very harsh don't be very hard on the mannequin because it the ear might come off and you know just in your hand so just pull it very gently and here on the bottom, you can see that there is a traumatic perforation. Sorry. There is a traumatic perforation. That's why we need to comment on the perforation. And if there is a white deposit as a white debris, as I said, there could be a cholesteatoma. But again, you will see that on this side of the corner, there is again a perforation. So there is a cholesteatoma plus a perforation, which is very common in cases of cholesteatoma. Acute otitis media. Now you can see it bulging along with redness. So if you do not say redness, redness, you will be able to see very well. Keep looking for few seconds, maybe three or four seconds to look for if there is any bulging or not, or if it is retracted. Retracted will be towards the ear, bulging will be towards you. So if it is bulging and if it is red, most likely the diagnosis will be acute otitis media if the symptoms just started. Okay, now this one, as I said, when you see something whitish on the other side, it's not on this side, but it's on the other side of the tympanic membrane, it's a tympanosclerosis. This is otitis externa, which you can see directly on your inspection. You might not even have to palpate to reach here. And this is absolutely a contraindication because definitely you cannot insert a otoscope in this scenario. And mastoiditis, of course, it is again a very simple one. 